Hello and welcome to Excel-DashboardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-DashboardTemplates.com where you're sure to learn the latest tips, tricks, and techniques and everything about Excel. All right, today we're going to answer the Friday challenge that we posted out there where um, your boss gave you all sorts of data and you'll notice that the data um, from the web developer on a survey of where people have visited the different places, countries, continents, things like that, um, are presented in one, each each user has all of their data doing comma separated, and some of them have spaces after the comma, some do not, but everything's in one cell. Well, how do I determine how many times the Bahamas was visited in all of the different ranges? Also, how many different countries and continents were visited? So it's uh, uh, a little bit of a trick, but uh, we're going to show you how you can do that using a combination of things. First, um, well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate it in text to columns, and we're going to have a separator of the comma. Then we're going to use a feature in Microsoft Excel pivot tables in order to um, group the data, um, and then uh, we'll show you how to do that as well. All right, so first things first, um, what we want to do is we're going to go into cell A2. I'm going to do Control Shift Down, and that gets me down to the bottom of my data set at 6394. Going to go up to my data ribbon and we're going to use that text to columns feature in the data tools group so this is going to bring up a dialog box and say all right what do you want to do we're, we don't know the fixed width we've got delimited instead which is going to say it is separated by commas which will work for us so i'm going to hit next now the default is always set up as tab i'm going to uncheck that you can leave it checked but um, i'm just going to uncheck it and do commas and you can see a sample of our data down below. See those leading spaces and sometimes there's no space. We'll take care of that um, as we move forward uh, so that we can find the unique values because space Bosnia and no space Bosnia are going to show up differently. Like you can see over here with Africa, those would be two separate places visited because of that space. We'll take that out in a future step. I'm going to click on next and it's going to say what type of format. Um, we're good to go with this right now. We're just going to go ahead and say go ahead and do it. And it takes a second and you'll notice that everything is now one cell has of Excel has each of the different places that have been visited all on the row. Now if I hit control end, you'll see uh, the data goes out to about D, the column DS. And what I want to do um, to make our uh, calculations work pretty quickly and easily is I'm going to create some different ID values across the columns and ID values across the rows. So to do that, um, what I want to do is I'm going to insert a column and I'm going to do the call it ID and we're going to do the number one, we're going to do the number two, and then I'm going to highlight those two and use my um, handy dandy fill options and just double click on it and you can see it puts one through oh, 6400, 6393. So. We're all set there. We're going to do something very similar up along the top where we're going to put in the number one in column uh, cell B1. All right, so now we're going to copy cell B1 across and get the number one. And just going to change that to two. I just like the formats in there to be the same. I'm going to use that same fill handle, but if I double click on it, it'll send it down the rows. Instead, I need to grab it with my mouse and drag it across. And so we know that our data goes out to about DS, but I'm going to go out to DZ just in case, just to make it a little bit longer than the data. So that's about 129 different columns of data that we have there. Now I'm going to, um, uh, we're going to, now that we've got all of our data broken up into these different values for each different row, you can see this one person over here in row two has visited 92 places, it looks like. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to recombine this into a pivot type data where it's everything is just in a single row. Now you can do that by copying and pasting and it'll take you quite a while because there's 129 different columns of data. But another simple way to do it is uh, using the Microsoft Pivot Table Wizard, which is uh, typically used in 2003, but you can use it here as well. I'm going to do Alt-D and then I'm going to hit the letter P and that will bring up the pivot table wizard. And you can see this one here, multiple consolidated ranges. That's the one I'm gonna to choose to recombine this. Um, it's sort of a power query, the first kind of power query option, multiple consolidated ranges. In the show notes, I will put a link down to where we do this on another data set so you can really get a full understanding of that. 
and I'm going to click on next and uh, the choices here in the wizard says do you want to create page fields or do you want me to create page fields I'm just going to let Excel create it since we've done the row and column numbers um, we've already kind of set it up for success there now you have to give it the range um, and no matter if you highlight the range first or uh, haven't highlighted anything you're always going to have this to do this so I, you don't have to highlight it originally I'm going to click on cell A1 and do control shift end and that gets me all the way out to column uh, DZ and row 6394 in one fell swoop. Click on Add, and then click on Next. And uh, we're going to put all of this data in a new worksheet. Always best, because it's going to create a pivot table for you over there. So as Excel does its magic, it is recombining all of those values to do different counts of how many um, of row one and column one, how many of those different values do we have in each of those cells? And of course, it's only one now. But if I scroll all the way down um, to the very end, and uh, let me bring that up on the screen so that you can see that as well. If I go to the very end of the pivot table here, I've got 242,870 unique values within that large data set that we provided. Now, if I double click on this large data, uh, that pivot table t grand total, it will explode your data back into what the data would have looked like had it originally been done as a pivot table. So that's what multiple consolidated ranges does. So it kind of combines your data back into a, uh, a data set pivot table, but then if you double click on it, you can actually get your data right back into how it would have looked had you done it that way to start with. Now, um, if we scroll to the very bottom, you'll see there are 824,698 different values in there. A lot of them are blanks, um, but a lot of them are duplicates. So uh, we have now got our almost unique set of data. What we want to do is remember there's these leading spaces and ones that don't have leading spaces. Well, we want to get rid of that leading space so that we can get a unique set of values. And we'll run this through another pivot table operation and get our final list and counts. So to uh, trim that, we just use the trim function. So equals trim and click on cell C2, and your parentheses, and hit Enter. Now, this is going to fill the table with all of these different values for every single row. And so we are done with creating our unique list um, from the standpoint of there are still duplicates in here, and we'll take those away with a pivot table. But we're now not going to differentiate between Afghanistan with a space, and if Afghanistan without a space, they'll all be the same. So click anywhere in this table um, and do the um, a pivot table. So we can go up to insert. And um, in here, you have got a pivot table button. Or you can do Alt-DP like I did before, and it brings up that uh, create pivot table wizard. Either way, Alt-DP. And uh, um, so I uh, do those from the uh, Excel list or database. Um, or you can just go to the pivot table option and say, yes, please create a pivot table in a new worksheet for me. And once you have your pivot table here, let's go ahead and put our, um, where it said page two, let's go back to our data. We could have given this a better name than just page two. Um, this probably should have been something like trimmed values or uh, new value, something like that. But that is the column we're gonna use is page two. And so if I grab page two and put that in as a row label, you'll see all of the unique values of those. And then if I put that, drag and drop that, or probably any one of these and just do a count, you can see I will get all of the different counts that I have for every single unique value. So 228 people have gone to Afghanistan, 3,229 have been to Africa continent, uh, Somalia, uh, 1592. So, or I'm sorry, some American Samoa, not Somalia. Uh, so we have the list of unique values, total counts. I would filter this and get rid of the blanks by doing that. And then um, finally, I would just click anywhere on here and you should be able to um, uh, sort this. Oops, I need to just click on this column here, go up to my home ribbon, go over to the sort and filter options and do sort largest to smallest. So now there are your answers. Bahamas, Cambodia, French Guiana are the top three. Total places visited, if I scroll to the very bottom of the chart, you can see um, we've got, uh, we're on row 184, so that means we've had a total of 181 unique v places that people have visited with a count of a total of 242,868. Now this doesn't match that total that I had before on one of my pivot tables of 242,870. 
And that's because if you go back into the data, you will find um, that there are spaces in here. There's a couple of rows that no answers were submitted. And I think it's somewhere around, uh, oh, let's go to A4300, somewhere around there. There it is. See on cell uh, 4298 was blanks. So even though that was a valid row in our original data set, um, in our final data set, it's just going to be treated like any other blank. Therefore, there were two of those different rows, and that's where we ended up getting our counts from. So uh, this is Steve equals true. Hopefully you saw how to use that uh, really cool technique in order to explode data um, from a comma separated list using the data text to column features. And then once again, Alt D P and you, you wanna use multiple consolidated ranges in order to combine that data back into a pivot table where if you double click on the grand total of that pivot table, it gives you your full data set in one list instead of in each of those columns. So it's a quick way to basically copy each one of those columns into a single column. And uh, then we trimmed it and did another pivot table to get our final counts. So hopefully you learned a really cool technique to deal with comma separated value lists to be able to find unique values using those techniques. Once again, this is Steve Equals True at Excel-BoardTemplates.com. Head to the show notes some for some other great links and also consider subscribing to my video channel so you're sure to get the next post delivered directly to your inbox. Thank you.